I'm sorry. I don't have money. <laughs> I'm too busy trying to become a muscle mommy. Once I've achieved muscle mommy, then I'll achieve girl boss, okay? Today we're building the Game 65 from KNC Keys. It's actually in pre-order right now. It is quote their premier keyboard. It's supposed to complement their jacket liner switches. This keyboard is inspired by Squid Games. The starting price is going to be $400 and it's supposed to be like more premium. It is a tri-mount leaf spring 65% keyboard. The pre-order started last month and then there's 25 units available for a pre-order. So the mounting styles are gasket, silicon socks, modified bottom pin. So he's saying using a proprietary bowl-like isolation gasket reduces reverberation, provides a unique experience, and then O-ring. And then there's three colors. There's black, dark red, and a dark green. So I have a bunch of plates here. You got palm, carbon fiber. This is the PC, and then this is the alloy. Lots of plate options. Here are the O-rings with the different duros. Here's the 50A gaskets. Here is the daughter board. I think these are like the feet. What color do you guys think I have? There's black, red, and green. Boom. I have the black. But yeah, so here is the keyboard. Ugh. 65% it does have the nice arrow blocker and then you actually have this nice like cherry lip right here So the two side bezels are going to be thin But then the top and bottom bezels are a bit thicker and then here is the side Whoa, so it looks like this is a top piece This is the bottom piece and here is the internal weight. So that's kind of cool You do see three different things here. You see the top piece which doesn't fully encompass the bottom piece uh, There is a cutout right here so that you can still see the bottom piece and then you have this like little accent Here's the back. I don't know Korean. I'm not Korean unfortunately <laughs> So I can't translate this for you. This is interesting because this has been machined out into the case and also into this weight. They could have just done like a solid piece, right? Which is what you normally see. But what they've opted to do is to basically machine it out from the bottom piece and on the weight. So you have this nice fit. And then it's not like all connected. So you can see like there are breaks. But yeah, so from here you can see the top case covering the bottom case. You have the four little feet. Boop, 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 boop. Here is the USB port. It is a centered USB port. You see this little accent piece right here. Here you can see top piece being bigger than the bottom piece. And then here you can see the Squid Game. This is a Squid Game inspired keyboard. And then here is front lip. Front to lip. One thing to note, there are no visible screws on this. Ball catch. Yeah, so this does use the ball catch mechanism to assemble and disassemble. This internal weight is actually separate from this piece. It's actually two different pieces. And here you can see more of the squid games, right? There's a lot going on. I'm gonna deconstruct it just to see what we're working with. So it looks like you have four screws for this big weight right here. So this piece this is a completely different accent piece. And as you can see, they have gaskets and like cutouts for them. So you have four right here. And I'm guessing this is because when the top case goes over the bottom case, this acts as like a force break mechanism. You also have the gaskets on certain points on the case right here. So you can see they have been added. And also the screw points for the weight, these stick out. So kind of like a tray mount, you can see they protrude out. And so that acts as like an anchor piece. You can correctly align the internal weight. And then you see the same thing for the weights right here as well. So this is the internal weight and then this is the accent weight. But because of the way it's machined out, basically it goes in like this and then you screw it in from the back. So that's why you have these two weird screw holes right here. And so once you have all of that and then this would fit in like this. And that's how they achieved these cutouts right here. The accent weight itself is just a small little square. The bottom case has it machined out. And then these two accent pieces, 
it actually screws in in the back like that. Neat. There's a lot of things I see being done here, like having separate pieces increases like the metal on metal contact rate. And so they've incorporated adding these little gasket pieces to prevent that as well, right? They could have just kept this flat, but they've raised these to make it as like anchor points. So it's actually easier to like properly align, right? And then this part, the bottom piece is a lot thinner. So here is thicker and then here's thinner. And this is just like the little cubby for the internal weight. So not only do they have the alignment posts, but they also have like these gasket tabs. And so this is a pretty intricate design, I would say. And then on top of that, they've also blinged out this as well. So very cool. And then here you can see the KNC branding. So here is the ball catch piece. Here it's where the O-ring posts are. And then here are for the pin mounts. And then looking here, you once again, because this is a separate metal piece, you have the gaskets and then you have this one metal piece that protrudes out. And this is an alignment tab again. So you see the O-rings, there's four up here and then there's four down here as well. On the bottom piece, these are for the gasket tabs and then it also has the pin to help you align it. So essentially what KNC has done is they've realized there are a lot of metal pieces. So they've put gaskets or these force break mods everywhere you can see. So see, you can see the two here, two there. Anywhere there's like metal to metal contact, they've incorporated these gaskets also to make the build a little easier they've added these like alignment tabs for everything as well so this one is for the accent piece this one is for the gaskets and then this is your daughter board lots of gaskets lots of screws lots of anchor points but they're not pre-installed you gotta do it yourselves so here's a plate here you have this cutout for the pins and then you have this tab for the gasket socks. No flex cuts on the plate, pretty standard, but there are a lot of plates being offered. You have polypropylene, brass, carbon fiber, FR4, palm plate, and it comes with alloy plate. So you have a total of six plate options, right? Here are their silicon socks. So as you can see, they're little socks and you just slide them on like here. So it's interesting because it doesn't cover the entire gasket. It's just half of it. And then it has this little gap right here for the pin mount. Here are the O-rings. So for the gaskets, it comes with 50A, but you can get 30A. And for the O-rings, you can get 35 or 65 as an add-on, but each one will come with a 50. So this one is going to be the 65. This one's going to be the 35. And then each kit will come with the 50. So this one's going to be softer. This one is going to be stiffer. I think there's no foam kit. It does not come with a foam kit. And also for the outer accent, this is a clear coated brass, but you can also get a stainless steel one. These are the 35A gaskets, but they'll come with the 50A gaskets. So default will come with these, but then you have a choice of these. I'm gonna do super soft everything because I'm a soft girl, okay. <laughs> Here's a PCB, no flex cut, hot swap. You have a choice of bottom row. You can split the caps lock. You can do split backspace. You don't have a physical reset button and there's also no LEDs. And then here you can see the Easy Mate connector thing right there. Hey guys, I made the best sounding keyboard. What if I did that and it's just clickies? I'm pretty sure I would trigger half the like entire population of keyboard enthusiasts. <laughs> Should I do that? <laughs> I like clickies. Oh, are you Frank? Box switches are nice. I like white and pink.
But I think my favorite was still PP plate pin mount, but I also liked brass plate pin mount more than carbon fiber. I think pin mount was probably my favorite mounting style out of them all. And if I had to rate plates, it would probably go PP brass carbon fiber. I thought brass sounded really good. Carbon fiber was like kind of muted for me. I didn't really quite like it, but this is the Game 65. So it's actually available for pre-order right now. It says it's low stock units. So board comes in three colors, black, red, and green. This is the black, but 65% with an arrow key blocker. You have this nice like cherry lip right here. This accent piece, you can actually swap it out for a stainless steel one if you would like board uses three different mounting styles. There are six different plates you can get. So default comes with alu, but you can also get a PP plate, brass plate, carbon fiber plate, FR4, and palm. So a total of six plates. You can buy a solder PCB, but default is a hot swap. It does use like the easy mate connector, so it just pops off. Overall, very neat board. You have a lot of options. This does start at $400, but yeah, overall pretty solid board. It is a higher price point, but with like how premium and how like intricate the case is, I definitely understand why. If you're someone who really likes to like experiment, this one you have like a ton of different options that you can like pick and choose from. Maybe the Squid Game motif isn't for everyone, but I mean, honestly, aside from like the thematic motifs, it's a solid board. It's a nice board. I think personally, I would pick the green one just cause I like green boards, but you know, but yeah, thank you Key Circle for reaching out to me. Thank you KNC for sending it to me. Thank you Lydia for hand delivering it to me. And yeah, the board, pretty neat.